You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. Wait, don't look like a pastor yet. Still, uh... <laughs> That's fair. I mean, it's what the shirt's for, though, right? You're the one wearing jeans. Uh, yeah, but, like, <laughs> you can't see that. So, like, it could be, like, Bermuda shorts. It could be way worse. Ah, uh, would it be okay to go Bermuda shorts if you're a pastor in Hawaii? Like, I think as long as you have a black clerical on, that that's where we draw the line. Like, if it's too dingy gray, people will make fun of you um, a lot. Hi. Uh, but um, if, if you wear Bermuda shorts, as long as the clerical is black, it's fine. Okay, it's good to know. Um, I look forward to seeing you at conference this summer. <laughs> but if you're in Hawaii, could you, I mean, like, you're going to have to buy, like, 18 different uh, clericals said because they're going to go dingy gray in Hawaii with that sun. How many pairs of board shorts do you need? What's the ratio of board shorts to clerical for a Hawaii pastor? How often are you you actually anything important in seminary? How Uh, often are you actually getting into the water with the board shorts? Like while with the clerical on? (laughs) Yeah, clearly. We've gone astray. (laughs) Um, It reminds me of watching The Exorcist. If you've ever watched that. The Exorcist wore board shorts? No, 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 no. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's got well, that, that... you down, like you downloaded it off the internet and it was one of those fake ones. <laughs> Just stop. I saw it on VHS the first time I ever saw it. Uh, but, uh, no, it's got the young or pastor, old. the old pastor, right? Uh, priest, yeah. right? Catholic priest. Um, and it's, it's, uh, there's a scene like 30 seconds long, but it's a scene of the young pastor schooling a bunch of high schoolers in, uh, uh pickup basketball outside. Yeah. In and shorts and a clerical. Well, I thought it was a cassock. <laughs> no, he's not in a cassock. That would have been so much better. <laughs> it would have been better, but it wasn't a cassock. I did see a, a TikTok of a, a skateboarding priest in a cassock. Um, I was really glad for the Reformation. Was it, really, <laughs> was it really a priest or was it some dude who found a black dress and put it on and pretended to be a priest? <sighs> he could ollie either way, so... <laughs> All these, I used to be able to ollie, and I didn't even own a skateboard. It's not hard to ollie. It's a flex. (laughs) You just just slide up your foot. It's not that hard. We're going to talk about Jesus today or not? Yeah. All right. I was going to say something skateboard related. (laughs) I'm no Sean White. I do love to yell, do a kickflip out the window whenever I see youth skateboarding. (laughs) The kickflip. Well, how's that kidding? <laughs> We're on Mark chapter eight. In those days, uh, when the great crowd had gathered and they had nothing to eat, he, being Jesus, called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have had nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on their way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, were you not paying attention last chapter? Wait, no, he he answered them. How many loaves do you have? And they said seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And they took the seven loaves. And having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they gave them to the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these should also be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied and took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about 4,000 people. And he sent them away. And immediately, he being Jesus, got into the boat with his disciples and went away into the district of Dalmanutha. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I thought you were going to butcher that that last really name. There. I'm not sure that I didn't. I guess we'll wait in the comment. Um, I mean, you could have, but uh, but you did. But yeah, like no, that that was good. Out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what do you got for this? Uh, I, I 
it's it's the the series of diminished miracles you guys like this is why you only get one loaf of bread because like jesus did the five thousand the four thousand it just sort of shrinks every single time until now you just get bread um I, we already did this one. Like the wait, how is thing. this? The, wait, hold on. I know that was the disciples joke, but... didn't even say this looks familiar. I'm I know I'm making a bit, but like talk to me through this. Well, what's different I, other than I less they, impressive? No, I think they did. I I mean I think they kind of do understand this, right? Okay. <clears throat> and we've we've kind of addressed this beforehand. Um, in the, in the in the past uh, uh couple episodes, which. That means nobody's watching this one. Is watch those. So this was can... chapter six. This is probably like eight episodes ago. We're <laughs> taking a long time. Right. No, I think I might have referenced it last time, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, we've got Jesus here in the land of the Gentiles, right? In the land of the heathens. He has been so for a while. I think, if memory serving me, all of chapter seven was was up there, right? <clears throat> um, or at least he had gone up there and he's dealing with Gentiles and he's doing things, uh, the same sorts of things for the Gentiles that he was for. Uh, for the the people of Israel, for the for the Jewish people, which mm. is a little um, not not concerning, but confusing, I would say to to say the least, at least for his disciples, I would think to begin with. <clears throat> Um, it's an interesting point of reference. Like they're they're, they're a little nervous about this thing, not because they don't think that Jesus can feed people, but because that they, they don't think he should feed these people. Well, and so here's the, yeah, exactly. I th- and I think that's uh, in, in verse four, that's the interesting thing because they're not dumb, right? Because that's what we think. Like, uh, wait, Mark, this this happened twice and the disciples are just dumbfounded? Like, hmm, wait a minute. It is. It is these people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. It is these people, right? It's, it's, and, and when you hear that in the context of, well, he already did this with the uh, 5,000. And that was uh, down down south with uh, the people of Israel, with with the uh, the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. These people does have a, a more of a these aren't God's chosen people, hmm. are they? I mean, I, I think that's kind of where the disciples are. They're just like, sure. how are you? But this is coming off the heels of Jesus already, I believe, healing two different individuals. He ser- yeah, I think so. Yeah, deaf man and the uh, the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was demon possessed. Right. So those two, and, and and this is making the assumption that those are the only two miracles that Jesus did when he, when he was up there. And even if they were, that's enough because even those two, he's doing that for people who aren't Jewish. And it's really confusing, especially the conversation that he had uh, with the Syrophoenician woman in regards to the dogs eating the food and the children and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so the disciples are, are are privy to all of all of that. They are privy to the feeding of the five thousand. So here they are sitting with the four thousand, and Jesus kind of brings up the exact same scenario right. as with the five thousand. And now they're kind of sitting there in this tension of like, uh, can't. Can anybody feed these people? And it's not even feed. This is the interesting thing uh, uh, as well. Um, how does how does the ESV put it in, in uh, that you just read in in verse four? In verse four, it, yeah. it was uh, how can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? I think it's more than just feed these people. Um, I think the Greek will actually uh, lend you to to uh, hear them saying, uh, "Fill these people full up." Because that's what happened previous, right? Yeah. So, so the, the previous these one people worthy of receiving the same miracle that, that right. we just saw. Because the previous one, they first ask, like, how could we even give how could anybody give these people even something to eat? Right? Sure. Even a morsel of bread. It's gonna take a miracle. And then they get a miracle with however many baskets left over, twelve, right? Mm-hmm. Um and now it's so they were all filled up, like they they were busting at the gut. They had all the food that they could ever want. It right. wasn't just uh, I'll give you enough to like get. You can home. get the meat sweats. I've never eaten enough fish to get the fish sweats, but yeah, not even sushi. I guess we've eaten a lot of sushi. Yeah, just get, I, yeah, but that might be the rice sweats. I don't know. It's the carb sweats. Well, carbs, it's bread and bread and fit. Well, I'm not helping this discussion at all. I really <laughs> like in Mark though, where we're, we always talk about this is just this is the bum rush to the cross. Mark wastes no time with this this whole thing. He cuts out all of the superfluous stuff and just gets right to the quick of things. Jesus going to the cross, where most of the gospel will be. Um, I don't even know how many podcast episodes we're going to spend on it. But then we have the feeding of the five thousand and the feeding of the four thousand, and it seems like it's it's sort of drawing things out in a way 
way that doesn't really seem like Mark would want to do it, unless this is Jesus first being baptized, where we begin this thing, where he he assumes the sin of the world, he collects the the Jews, and then he goes and he collects the Gentiles, and then he's gonna go to the cross. But there's actually there's intent and purpose here, and that's I like that expression. I, no, I kind of like that. And, and if you and if you want a, a gospel, uh, and now we're just you know making making our own little uh, um, subjective um, answers to these things. But if you want a gospel that's focused mainly on Holy Week, I'd say go to to John because like. Mm. You've got like seven, I don't know, but Holy seven, dude, yeah. seven <laughs> chapters that happen, that happen after Paul the Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost like half of the book is after Paul the Sunday. Sure. Um, this one, you've got, you got 10 chapters until, until uh, Holy Week. Well, I don't know. I think, I don't know when it is. 12 chapters, whatever. Let's find out. 48 chapters, something like that. So what else do we have for the feeding the 4,000? Because I mean, otherwise it, it is, it's, it's very similar. Um, maybe even then uh, useful with, with sort of the, 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 the wink and nod towards Holy Communion. We'll, we'll just say that so we don't get too far into the weeds on what this is or is not. Um, but, but in the same way that, that the feeding of the 5,000 is definitely along the lines of, of no. something that should get you thinking about the sacrament. No, absolutely. The um, Gentiles get it too. If the Gentiles get it too. And, and again, I think if you're looking at, at the Greek specifically, um, mm -hmm. I think in uh, the feeding of the 5,000, you don't have, and maybe uh, somebody could uh, check me on this, you don't have Jesus, uh, or at least Mark, saying that Jesus gave thanks. Um, but you do hear. Hmm. And it's the exact same word, and it's, it's yeah. the exact same tense uh, uh, that's uh, in the, the words of institution that you get to hear later. So mm -hmm. I think there is a wink and a nod. And the odd thing is, it's not a wink and a nod in regards to the Jews, not as if the Jews don't get it. But it's like, oh, there's going to be a wink and a nod Gentiles. where you don't expect it. Yeah, doubly the Gentiles. So. I like that. So I think that's there. Um, and then I've mentioned this uh, uh, before as well, uh, uh, and most people kind of overlook it. I think it's it's the baskets um, and uh, the basket here, because when I think of basket, like I think of a little basket, right? Mm -hmm. Teeny weeny one. Um, and I'm like, oh, man, there was there was seven of those left over. Wow. It's a lot. It's not really a lot. Maybe enough. Maybe enough scraps for a, a loaf. Right. Um, but these baskets were a very specific uh, type of basket, mostly uh, used in the Roman world. Uh, so Gentiles would be using these sorts of baskets. Mm -hmm. It's the exact basket that in um, uh, that uh, in in uh, Acts you hear um, Paul when there. Paul is in Damascus, he's lowered down the city wall in this basket. So imagine the basket is so like a, approximately seven Pauls worth of worth of bread. Right. It's, it's a basket big That's enough a to fit a, a grown man in. So, so you've got uh, a basket, uh, seven of them that could probably mm -hmm. fit hundreds of loaves of bread, which only started with seven. Like you've got more than, I mean, this is Jesus giving. The abundance is something we can even overlook. Yeah. Also, I would like to begin to use uh, poles as a unit of measurement along with cubits, if that's... Right. It, yeah, but that's volume, not length or width or height. It's volume. No, yeah, Paul is a volume uh, right. unit, you for sure. It fills up a basket. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you could pour eight poles into that into that basket, right? <laughs> no, one pole per basket. So how many... How, how many how many poles to fill up a swimming pool is the question. Well, now we're asking whether or not this uh, this volume is are we talking uh, dry weight or are we talking fluid weight, right? Because Paul is right. I mean, he would be seventy percent water. Oh, this bit has gone nowhere. Let's, Let's keep, keep going. going. Uh, yeah, Do you ever play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two? That was like a PS was best one, one, wasn't it, man? Yeah, that was the best one. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was great. Got to listen to ska music while you did kickflips. Right. One eighty <laughs> solid. Yeah. Yeah. Tail grabs. Huh? Yeah. Oh. So uh uh beginning at verse eleven in chapter eight, <laughs> the Pharisees came and began to argue with him, being Jesus, seeking a sign from him, a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. 
and he left them and got into the boat and went to the other side. This is a good, that, that's enough, right? Yeah. You know what, you know what I find is really sad? Hmm. Um, is that kids nowadays don't even know who Tony Hawk is. Right? There's a, there's a, like Tony Hawk has a, a Twitter uh, and a, a great deal of it is actually just sort of him interacting with people who have no idea who he is. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's. Uh, First guy to land a 900. It's the guy who brought, if it wasn't for Tony the Hawk, there wouldn't be X Games. Right. Uh, and, and yeah, there's just a whole generation of people who. A, Kids these days aren't listening to this show. B, <laughs> don't know who Tony Hawk is. <laughs> are we disconnected? No, it's the children who are wrong. <laughs> right. We don't have so to find the bridge to them. But I they am, need uh, to cross to us. I- I'm confused because uh, it seems like there is, but also is not uh, an allusion to uh, the, the parallel verses from this. Uh, for no sign will be given to this corrupt generation, but I thought the sign of Jonah and Jesus here is just stopping the sentence early. But then he gets in a boat. Yeah, he doesn't give the sign of Jonah here. At least Mark doesn't. Yeah, um, Mark doesn't. Right. And I think I think uh, uh, Matthew will record that, but Mark mm-hmm. doesn't. Um, and remember, so... That's not to say that Mark isn't leaving, uh, or is is. is uh, that's not to say that Matthew and Mark are are against each other. See, Matthew says the sign of Jonah. Mark does it, and so mm-hmm. they're they're not they're not congruent with each other. And that's not the case at all. I, remember, I think uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Mark is writing in such a way uh, to to get something across. And I, I think part of that, it, it's kind of his his whole entire um, gospel has this this kind of understanding of um, uh, faith first, then seeing, not seeing, then believing. Hmm. And you even have that with with the uh, uh, with the resurrection account uh, or the short resurrection account, right? Where you do have this empty tomb. Um, right, and then just utter confusion, and then just utter confusion. I love and, it. Yeah, and, and all that you're left with is um, he has risen, just and, like he told you, and nobody understands it, but it's still true. Right? Are we gonna? It's we're not gonna if, do the long ending if, for this this podcast. Are we? Are we just gonna stop with the confusion, the short ending? I don't think. Well, in like thirty years, if you want to get canceled. Um, <laughs> We're gonna get there. I think that's part of the problem. <laughs> I think that's 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 the the crazy thing is because um, I, the the one year lectionary is it that that's, what your, yeah, your Easter, Easter resurrection? I love is? it. I love right. it. It's perfect. It's just like hey, hey, Christ is risen and it all, and that's then they okay. go out terrified and they tell no one. Yeah, that's that's actually a great place to begin work for the church today um, because <laughs> it's looking pretty familiar. Uh, right. We're not talking about that yet. But, yeah, but, but here because. We uh, do have that problem that the Luther Confessions quote the end of I Mark know. 16. So. I know. The small catechism. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't count. I'm just saying, like, this we cross. wouldn't necessarily have to talk about it. Except that like, one verse. We'll talk about that one verse. We'll talk about it all. But I, <laughs> Stay tuned. I'm sure people are 2027, wishing we wouldn't. May yeah, 2027. Uh, so, um, no, I mean, like, there's two ways to look at this. And you're right. First, it can be like in the same way that um, at the resurrection account, one said there were three angels and one said there were one. And, and those don't actually disagree. Uh, it's just sort of different perspectives. And so, like, it's not wrong to say that I have one house plant. I also have three house plants. Um, and all of them are kind of dying right now. And in the same way, it's, it's not wrong for, for Matthew to want to say, you know, um, you know what I can't stand is people who cut in line and mark to say you know what i can't stand is people period and like both can be both can be driving at a different thing right right and and again if 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 mark is is trying to get a, a, across this this idea of faith um apart from from uh, uh signs mm-hmm. um then then you don't get very... the sign of jonah here even what's yeah. that you don't get the sign of jonah here then right then you that's don't related. get the sign of right yeah and, 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 and both of them can be true because I, I have no doubt um, mm-hmm. that if I were in the same place as, as the women Easter morning, I would, I would have the same reaction that they do uh, in, in the Gospel of Mark. 
that I'm going to, I'm going to leave that tomb. I'm going to be scared. I'm not going to know what the heck just happened, even though the angel told me, and I'm going to have doubt until I stumble upon Jesus. No, I, I would understand it. I would also run there the fastest and not go in. I already right. proved my point. Guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I agree completely. I um, mean, it's not like those who, who were told you will not get anything but the sign of Jonah understood that this was about death and resurrection. Uh, we still today quibble that that Jonah just sort of prayed hard enough so that nothing bad would happen to him. And that's not about death and resurrection. Um, that, I, I'm, I'm totally okay with with just sort of leaving this. If, if you're looking for a miracle that will satisfy you to so that, that your eyes will make you believe, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And what right. you want is a miracle religion with no Christ, not a Christ with plus or minus miracles. If there is Christ, the right amount of miracles will be there, whether or not you see them. Right. But, but if what you want is a, a miracle religion with no Jesus, what you really just want is to be in charge of the universe. You want to be God. And no, you don't get that. No signs right. for you. And and Jesus says, I don't think he says this in. Uh, uh, I don't think Mark records him saying this. Um, but uh, it's it's that whole uh, Lazarus, right? Uh, rich man and Lazarus thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Where yeah. you where you get at the end? Hey, if one send... should be raised from the dead, <laughs> right? And 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 uh, Abraham is like, no, not even if one is raised from the dead, will they believe? No <sighs> wah, sign is going to be enough for wah, people who have hardened wah, hearts. Yeah. Right. There will always be a reason to to uh, disbelieve. Right. Which is why it's such a good thing that uh, the disciples who do believe completely understand everything that Jesus is talking about. Like as we as we go forward, 100 percent all the time. Here we go. Now, they had forgotten to bring bread and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he, being Jesus, cautioned them, saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? Do you not remember when I broke five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Twelve. And the, the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? This is the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Praise, Praise to you, you Christ. oh Christ. I love it when we get to say it that way. <laughs> this is the gospel of this the Lord. <laughs> the gospel of the Lord. Don't you understand, you fools? No, it's really interesting, right? After, after uh, he, he has... Feeding of the 4,000 with the Gentiles uh, uh, goes, and now he's having run in with the uh, religious leaders. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. that he's back in uh, Judea, Israel, that uh, Galilee little area. Um, and now it appears as if he jumps on a boat, maybe to, to leave again. I think I think uh, at the end uh, of Mark, we get to see that he's, he's in Gentile country again. So it's like uh, oh, Gentile country, uh, Jewish company. Oh, now we're going back into Gentile country. Um, and and in that, uh, in that travel little montage, what's that? Travel montage. Travel montage, right? Uh, and and in that little voyage, um, uh, the disciples get hungry, and they're just like, oh, I can't believe we didn't bring any bread, except for this one loaf. How silly! We're we're not gonna have enough food. <laughs> It's it's silly because uh, I I think this is two part. It's a two parter, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just the disciples. I mean, they just were witness to, to miracles. But that now that isn't to say that Jesus um, uh, did miracles just on their behalf for them. No, um, I don't think he did. Like this is sort of proof that he didn't because he knew that they wouldn't take it to heart when right when they would need it. Later. If yeah. every time if every time uh, uh, they needed lunch, Jesus just whoop, yeah. Got, Got, a it, guys. Got a bologna sandwich up, right? Bologna, uh, that's the that's the lunch meat of the Lord. <laughs> no, no, yes, because it's against the uh it's against the Levitical code. <laughs> All right, that was wise. So uh, <laughs> no, I I think it's easy to sort of just sort of laugh at at the disciples and their stupidity here. Like you're right, didn't they just see this again? Um, but but really I also think this is a testament to our lives in, in faith. Uh this is this is me. Uh I, I can 
rightly know a thing, should rightly know a thing. But when fear comes upon you, it's so easy to forget about doctrine. It, it, it's so easy to, 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 Jesus is trying to teach them. He's saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod, the little leaven that spoils the whole lump. That, that this, this sounds familiar, but it's toxic enough that it will take over and ruin everything. And well, it's hard to think of anything when, when you're afraid of something really bad happening, even if you rightly should believe that nothing bad will. I know that they, they have every right to you know, expect Jesus to take care of them. And I also know what it's like to be a sinner who also believes and has to praise things like, you know, Lord, help my unbelief. Uh, because it, it's, it's easy to get distracted. So is, is Jesus all that concerned about, uh, is what he's saying here uh, about, hey, you guys aren't trusted in me for first article gifts. You should start doing that. Um, is it, is it, is it that, that, and maybe it is, maybe it's, it's twofold and, and a bunch of different layers, like we uh, talk about all the time, but I'm curious if it's not, Jesus hears them talking about a loaf of bread, only having one, mm-hmm. that he jumps in with, uh, uh, with bread and yeast references, which confuses them even more. Like this is okay, solving wait, the thing that I'm asking for. Wait a minute, Pharisee bread? I don't know. What's this Pharisee bread you're talking right. about? We don't even have that. We just got regular people bread. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Jesus kind of goes on because then he, then he, when he says, don't you understand? Don't you have eyes to see? Uh, a wink, wink. We're going to hear about something in a couple of verses with eyes to see. And I bore you to death, don't I? Just yawn all the time. <laughs> um, don't you have eyes to see? And then also... Um, he says, don't, didn't you understand? And it's not, didn't you understand? I, again, I think it's more than just, didn't you understand about the, the loaves the, with the 5,000? Uh, I multiplied it. I, I'm a magic man. Um, but, but it's, don't you understand? Don't you understand what happened with the Jews? What I did for them. Don't you understand what happened with the Gentiles? What I did for them. And then, so then what is the, the leaven of the Pharisees? Because that's, that's, I think what is perhaps clouding their, their mind or what Jesus is trying to, to get at here is they've got, they've got the, the, the mentality of the, the leaven of the Pharisees, which is, is two, twofold, right? From the, from the Jewish, it, it's the same thing. It's of the law, but of, of the Jewish per- perspective, it is ceremonial law, you have to do this, don't eat bologna sure. sandwiches, blah, 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 fulfill the law, do the best you can. But then also the leaven of the Pharisees would would also be that, uh, yeah, none of the things of God are for the Gentiles. Hmm. And and none of the things of the gospel are for either group of people, right? That has nothing to do with, no, I the gospel has nothing to do with anything. That's the leaven of the Pharisees. And so once you just get in this, uh, the gospel doesn't exist sort of mentality, that's going to that's going to ruin your whole loaf. That's going to ruin sure. your whole religion, your whole faith, your whole everything. Sure. Don't you get it, people? Well, and, and, and last what? thing, last thing. And then that trickles down into the I don't trust in God for for my first article gifts. That's exactly where I wanted it. Yeah. So, so it, the idea of, of the leaven of the Pharisees, when you when you start and end in the law, that the ceremonial and moral both, uh, ceremonial and, and moral both, the word enough is always going to be on the tip of your tongue. The, the word enough is the law word of of have you done enough? Have you given enough? Have you been enough to receive enough? And, and so you also have to work backwards then. And, and so the disciples who who have this mindset right now, and in the midst of being stuck in the law, they look at the one loaf of bread they have, and they said, this is not enough. I know that God in his mercy has given more, but but you're right. If if, if all you have to, to measure is yourself, it's really hard to look at your surroundings and be content too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> when you don't have that understanding of when when the gospel isn't predominating, hmm. um, and, and you don't see uh, don't see the Lord as the one who does for you, um, yeah, it's just it's it it just it just screws with your whole perspective. And then that's the sinner in all of us constantly too, right? Sure. It's it's this just this constant thing. And again, I mean, we could we could even see it playing into the apostles' lives, um, very specifically with Peter's uh, even after the resurrection. In regards to the, um, in regards to the the Gentiles and circumcision, how mm. easily uh, that can come in and permeate uh, your thought process and and your your belief sure. system, even after you've known of the gospel, um, because that's just so 
that's just, just, just makes sense. It's comforting in, in a <sighs> that that almost way. means though that then when Jesus is doing this, he's not chastising them, but he's preaching the gospel to them. He, he's not saying you guys are stupid. Don't don't you pay attention to the miracles? But like, hey, I know you're scared right now, so let's actually take a take a minute and think about all the ways that God cares for you here. And all the ways that God has cared for you here and all the ways that God has promised to care for you here. Don't pay attention to the people that say God doesn't care for you and you have to earn it. But but rather in the midst of your fear, let's instead of just feel bad about not thinking about the promises enough, actually just hear the promises. Yeah, right. No, I love it. That was, that was a great way to to end that particular segment. I have nothing to, to make it better. Sorry. Do a kickflip? Could do a kickflip. Man, you look so studious in your new surroundings. Like before, all these books are way in the background, like mine. So you don't know how many there are. Yeah. But yours is like you took every book you owned and put it in a four by three foot. I've actually built a fort of books and I just sit in it now. Yeah, that's it. I I can count the amount of books that you have. You made sure that it's just in the frame. So you got like a total of like 32 books and that's it. That is the correct number of books. Man, you look like you are. A scholar. <laughs> uh, anything, anything that helps at this point. Um, uh, we're at thirty minutes, aren't we? Yeah, we out.